Ah, oh, welcome to Washed Up. It's your two favorite Washed Up football players, also known as your mother's favorite sports show back here in this holiday season, 2019 bowl season. JD, how you feeling, man? It's upon us. Man, it feels good to be back in the saddle, Jake. Episode one, like the real episode one, like we introduced it last time. Now we're all systems go. I'm ready, man. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. First bowl up, Friday. December 20th, JD, the first game up is the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl, JD. I got this shirt on, this little, I guess, Bahamas beach shirt on. I got this yeah. Santa hat on. I'm you look all, good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in here. We got the Buffalo Bulls versus the Charlotte 49ers, JD. If you weren't careful, you'd think this is an NFC versus AFC matchup. But no, it's a bowl game. It's the Buffalo Bulls versus the Charlotte 49ers. Look, JD, both these teams coming at 7-5. Charlotte, this is their first year to be bowl eligible. Sure enough, they are bowl eligible under the direction of Will Healy. He's done a great job in his first year there. They love him there. They're both coming down to the Bahamas. Those boys up, used to playing in those frigid temperatures, as you know, JD, up in upstate New York. They're coming down mm. to the Bahamas. Warm weather, and both these teams love to run the ball. They're both averaging 4.9 yards a carry. That's awesome. The disparity, though, JD, is in that run defense. Buffalo top 10 in opponent yards per rush attempt. They're allowing under three yards a carry. On the other side, Charlotte, trouble. 108th in the country, five yards a carry. Buffalo's been averaging 6.7 yards a carry in their last three games. They're running the ball well. Even to make matters worse, Buffalo, top five in opponent yards each game. They're allowing only about 90 yards on average. Again, on the other side, Charlotte, uh-oh, almost 200 yards of rushing each game. This bodes very well for that sophomore running back that Buffalo has. He's been running well all year, J.D. Tell us about him. Well, Jay, you hit it on the head with all those stats. I think you're Rain Man over there. We got Jarrett Patterson, over 1,600 yards running the football, 17 touchdowns. And, oh, by the way, his backup, Kevin Marks, also over 1,000 yards on the season. So they are a two-headed monster in that oh, backfield. Man. Also worth noting, they run the ball just about as much as anyone else in the country outside of those academies. They are fifth in the country with their rushing percentage. 68% of the time, Jake, they're putting the ball on the ground. Going to be kind of a problem for this Charlotte defense to uphold with all of that manpower coming downhill at them. Really going to be interesting to see how they combat that rushing attack. Now, little birdie told me, Jake, you got a, a really strong opinion on this game. You want to tell the people at home what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think Buffalo wins on the turnovers as well. Uh, Believe it or not, Charlotte's in the red on the year in turnovers. Again, Will Healy came into this game, leaving this team to 7-5. They're bowl eligible, but JD, they're partying. They're partying in North Carolina. They come down to Bahamas. The music stopped, JD. They're not going to party anymore because Buffalo's coming and running all over this team. I'm calling it a Jake take. We're telling everyone it's a Jake take. We're going to have a little segment here on our video series called Jake Takes and Bikel Picks. It's our best picks, best takes of the whole year. There's going to be a couple throughout, sprinkled throughout the whole season. This is one of JD, the very first game we're talking about. We got Buffalo minus five and a half, the total 57 and a half. I love Buffalo minus five and a half here. They are going to roll these 49ers. Man, I, I don't know what to say besides that. Coming in to the first episode, hot with the Jake Take. I love it. Doing some research on these teams, I can't, I can't disagree with you. Both seven and five, like you mentioned, but a very different seven and five. Charlotte going from FCS to FBS this year. You look at their wins; they have four wins of their seven. Are three are against one eleven teams. The other is against an FCS team in Gardner Webb that finished three and nine. So, you look at resumes, not super comparable. Listen, I don't think Charlotte the SEC has. There, JD? No, <laughs> you're gonna get some trouble, Jake, with all the Southeast viewership we got going on. I'm from Atlanta. I gotta go back home, Jake. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is going to be an absolute bludgeoning of the Charlotte 49ers. Great story, great feel good story, but hey, if you want happy endings, you gotta go to Hollywood, not the Bahamas. <laughs> I'm with you here, I'm taking the Buffalo Bulls to get it done in the Bahamas. Moving on, we got a great one for the second game, Jake. We got the Utah State Aggies against the Kent Golden Flashes in the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Bowl in Frisco, Texas. 7.30 Eastern, ESPN 2. That's right, ESPN Dose. Jake, this game is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, my beautiful girlfriend and I, when we want a smoothie, we go to the Tropical Smoothie Cafe here in Waco, Texas. So, yeah, so, I mean, shout out there. Um, but keeping with the, uh, the tropical theme, going from Bahamas to Tropical Smoothie Cafe, you want to talk a little bit more about this matchup with Utah State and Kent State, what are you seeing there? 
Yeah, Kent State is top 10 in tempo. They, they love to run the ball. They, they are averaging 4.4 yards a carry. Um, they, they will move fast, JD. They can put a lot of points up in a hurry. Um, but where I get a little nervous here is that Kent State defense. We're talking about how bad the, Buff, or the Charlotte 49ers are on that run defense. Well, I hate to break it to you. Kent State, these golden flashes are even worse, JD. Mm. They're allowing 5.3 <coughs> yards a carry, and they are 126 meters. There's only four teams worse than them in all of college football in opponent, ru an opponent rushing yards per game. They're allowing, JD, 250 yards a game. That means that these Aggies are going to be able to run all over them. I think they can take advantage of this matchup. I hope they can. Interesting, you talked about the run game there. Gerald Bright, over 800 yards on the year, averaging, I think it is five plus yards per carry. The guy has been especially effective and productive when getting the ball. Something interesting to note there about the Utah State Aggie running back. He hasn't had over 20 carries since September 28th when he had 36. Maybe he's not healthy. Maybe they used him up all in one game. I couldn't tell you. Looking a little more at the passing game, they've got a quite an effective tandem in quarterback Jordan Love. Before the season, everyone was high on him for draft boards. Tell you what, I don't Jordan like it. I Jordan love it in this hey. game. He hasn't been effective all year long. He's kind of been wishy-washy with the football. 16 interceptions to 17 touchdowns. But I'll tell you what, my guy's declared for the draft. He's going to be making his money. He's thrown to COC Mariner, Orange County resident from Tustin High School. I think he is going to have his mind free, have a big day on the field. And I like the Utah State Aggies to come out swinging in this one, Jake. Well, I like Utah State I'll Aggies to get what, it done. I, I love that Jordan Love, that bright guy. Number where's, where's number one on the field? He's got to be number one playmaker on that day again against this Kent State rush de defense. He mm. is going to have to shine brightly if you know what I'm talking about, Jake. Oh, man, don't do it to him, Jake. It's, it's not <laughs> even 2020 yet. You're already on some clear vision. There we go. That's why I got to wear these sunglasses. Hey, Gary Anderson coaches these Aggies. He's done a great job. He took a little stint off, but he has coached there for a while, has a great record under coaching these Aggies. I think he is going to easily take care of these Kent State going flashes. The line is 8.5. I am worried about a backdoor maybe by these Kent State flashes. Uh, mm. And they can put up a lot of points. The total, though, I believe 65 and a half. I, I really like the over here, J.D. Interesting. Interesting. So you are taking the Utah State Aggies, though, to cover. Is that what yes, I'm hearing? Yes. I, I will take them to cover and to win, but I do like the over. It's, it's, that's, I think that's the best play. I love it. I love it there. Well, hey, that's all the time we have here for this first installment of our bowl series for Washed Up. Hate to be those guys, but hey, throw us a like, throw us a subscribe if you're feeling really generous. It is the holiday season. Stay tuned for more of this action that we got coming your way for finishing out 2019 and 2020. We love you. We love your mothers, and we will be back in touch with you very soon. Stay tuned.